There's no doubt that Bill Parcells is the NFL's toughest coach, and maybe the best. He's turned four teams, four of them, from losers into winners, and he's won two Super Bowls along the way. How does he do it? What's his formula? And what does the stress of coaching do to his psyche? He's thought about that a lot. And we, in effect, put him on the couch to talk about it as he never has before. To begin with, he told us that one big secret of his success has been head-to-head -head confrontations. I think confrontation is healthy because it clears the air very quickly. And most of these athletes that you deal with are pretty well used to that kind of thing. Has an athlete ever taken a, a swing at you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, sure, we've had a few of those. Really? Well, sure, that's okay. Parcells spelled out his notion of how to turn a loser into a winner on, in, of man. all Come places, on, the Harvard Business Review. He wrote that a new coach or a new CEO has right to up, wage man. a relentless Close pursuit of perfection by showing he's in charge by imposing his leadership. And, of course, confrontations can do that, but... Didn't one of your players throw his jersey in your face? Yeah and he was taken off the field by security? Right. These things happen. He's still on the team. Yeah. I don't have to make examples out of players to establish my own place. What do you mean? I don't feel like I have to. Everybody knows what a p you are. They're <laughs> yeah. Cut it up in there, or I'll get me another part return. I don't really give a yeah, that's right. Uh, that's what you're going to be doing Sunday when we go to Seattle. You're going to be watching a game in New York on TV. When we first profiled him five years ago, we saw him at his toughest. Get in the huddle, Tedrick! On his players. Hurry up, Karzuski! Get over here, Scott! Get over here, Frost! On his coaches. Hey, don't tell me about the defensive coaches. Just watch the field goal kicker. And most of all, he's tough on himself. 14-hour days, six days a week, and on the seventh, he rests a mere 12 hours. Do you really need to work 14-hour days? Yes, sir. Maybe more. If you want to stay competitive, this is one of the most competitive businesses there is. This is the toy department. This is sports. That's for you. That's my life. It's my blood. It's how I'm measured. So it's not the toy department for me. After that season, Parcells had had it. He said his coaching fire had burned out, and he retired. He thought for good. Let's go, Dallas! Let's go! But then last year, at age 61, he came back to spur the Dallas Cowboys to their first playoffs in four years, and nothing had changed. Are you going to compete now, or are you going to get your ass worn out the rest of the day? I'm yeah, well, it don't look like it. What excuses do you accept from your players? Well, I'm not really in the excuse business. Don't tell me about the pain. <laughs> don't, don't say this one. You put it in your book. I know, but... Page but, 103, yeah. quote, we have this expression, don't tell me about the pain, show me the baby. Now, I know that... That's only in the context... Of? Football. Yeah. You know, let's get the job done here. I don't want to hear about the process. And officials wish they didn't have to hear so much from him. The ball was 20 yards from the receiver. That's an uncatchable ball. Hey, he's offside! Come on, that's the third time in a row! Throw the flag! And you know I don't bitch at the officials. Oh, I know that. Sporting News has called you, quote, a tyrant, a relentless perfectionist who makes everyone around him miserable. The first baby tyrant, I don't know, certainly perfectionist, but misery? I don't think so. No, I don't think I, I... I don't intend to make people miserable. I am demanding. Understood. But... And you know who's miserable? You. Oh, absolutely. Why? That's what I don't understand. You love the game. During the football season, nobody is more miserable than Bill Parcells. Why? <laughs> Someone kind of helped me with that recently. He said that the gift that you have is also your curse. He said, you like the challenge of putting yourself at risk, and then when you get at a certain place, you're looking for something else that, that challenges you even greater. And as a result, 
you become miserable until you find that. It was never called to my attention so specifically. You mean your wonderful wife, Judy, didn't call it to your attention specifically? She may have, but... She did. There are none so deaf as those that will not hear, isn't that right? <laughs> yes. I think that was probably me. I met Judy Parcells five years ago, but they have since divorced after almost 40 years of marriage. Did coaching kill your marriage? No. I, I 40 would, years? No, yeah, but I would never blame it on my job. I would blame it on myself and the way I uh, was negligent in a lot of respects. Negligent? I don't think... Do I you don't know what you said about your wife to me a few years ago? No, I know. Don't put it on the air. I'm going to do it right now. Well, first of all, and this is no disrespect to my wife, Judy, because she's been in this a long time. Yeah. Judy doesn't know whether the ball's blown up or stuffed with feathers, okay? <laughs> now, what kind of a horse is behind? Well, that's, that was, I didn't mean literally. I didn't mean literally. I, I just meant uh, Judy never worried about the, she couldn't be capable of worrying about the depth of the, the of your uh, misery. Right, and that's exactly right. She would ask you why you kept coaching because she says, the times that you're happy are so few compared to the times that you're unhappy. Why do you keep coaching? It's difficult to explain, but this game and this business is not without a myriad of incessant problems, okay? Everybody's incessant. life is well, full that. of incessant but problems. Even when you are successful, even when you win the game, about an hour after the game, you have a litany of things that you now deal with that are problematic. Who's hurt? Who am I going to replace him with? How am I going to get this team ready for next week? So the times that you are happy are minute compared to the time that you're dealing with problems. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So why did he come back for more misery after just three years of retirement? I was just starting to get a little bit bored. That thing that's always reached out to me to bring me back, it has a long arm. It's a tentacle, it's, it gets you, and it drags you back in. The tentacle that dragged him back was the long arm of Jerry Jones, the Cowboys' all-powerful owner, known for riding coaches hard and then firing them. He's fired five of them. I was uh, uh, basically perceived as someone that was difficult to work with, uh, that uh, was difficult for coaches uh, to uh, uh, do their job. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I am involved, wa was involved. Hands-on. Hands-on. But with Parcells, Jones has to be more hands-off. Jones had made his fortune in oil. And with it, he bought America's team, the Cowboys, and won three Super Bowls. But when the Cowboys collapsed, had three losing seasons in a row, Jones was desperate to hire a winner, and he's paying Parcells $17 million over four years. I read, Jerry, that you were so stressed out by all the losing before you hired Parcells. Is this true, that your hands had started to shake? You needed both hands to pick up a cup of coffee? Was I think, it that bad? I think that's accurate. The expectations uh, that I place on what we do as a team, and I know our fans are expecting, uh, those can, can be very nerve-wracking. And uh, certainly, uh, if we were having that conversation two years ago and you and I were having that cup of coffee, it would need both hands. So after one year, with Parcells, pretty successful year. I think I can drink a cup of coffee <laughs> one-handed. Jones is trying hard to defer to Parcells, but it doesn't come naturally. Is he the boss? Oh, I think uh, I'll call him the boss. And Jones will keep placating Parcells as long as the coach keeps winning. I work hard at making this work, and I've involved our entire organization in a way that makes this a good experience for him. I'm tempted to use the word pleasant, but you can't use that word in football. And you can't use that word with uh, Parcells. Well, Bill is prickly. 
but Prickly Bill has given ground too, allowing Jones to walk the sidelines, even though he had long said owners do not belong there. And on some subjects, like superstition, well, listen to this. Jerry Jones told me that you chewed him out. What? Because he leaned over and picked up a coin, a nickel, on the ground yesterday. Right. Oh, I'm a little superstitious. You don't want to tempt fate now. Now, what are you talking about? I had an Italian mother. She was very superstitious. It's a real thing, you know, superstition. Yeah. People think it's fake. It's not. It's real. The coin... Had the tail up. Had the tail up? Yeah. If it had been heads up? Well, you want to be on the back end or the front end of things. To stay on the front end, Parcells picks players who share his passion, like confrontational Keyshawn Johnson, seen here yelling at his last coach. Johnson told us that Parcells' pressure helps him excel, but that some players can't take it. We had a guy quit recently in camp because he just wanted to get away from Bill Parcells. He told Bill he couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> what was Parcells' reaction? I think Bill told him to go ahead, adios amigos. <laughs> Quarterback Vinny Testaverde had his best seasons playing for Parcells back with the Jets. Now, even though he's 40 years old, Parcells signed him to lead the Cowboys. How a boy, Vin. He tries to put a lot of pressure on the players on his team throughout the week of practice. So when you go out on Sunday afternoon and play in a game, it's like the world's been lifted off your shoulders. You know what Drew Bledsoe said about him, another one of his former quarterbacks? Mentally, Parcells is a pain in the ass. I couldn't wait until game day to finally get some peace and quiet. There you go. Yeah, it's unanimous. Walk through that play for him, Mo. But while practice can be excruciating for his players, Parcells told us that the practice field is the only place he feels truly at home. That's my favorite place out on the field, mm -hmm. practice field. It's my sanctuary. I feel cloistered there. And on that field, he let me in on a secret. At the ripe old age of 63, he believes that he has finally started to mellow. You know, you, you, when you, you know the end is near, you know, I, I really do know it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I can, I can enjoy it more. I'm enjoying it a lot more now than I did. And I'm not beating myself up as quite as much. Because, he told me, he and his veteran players aren't just fighting the opposing team. They're fighting Father Time. We're all in the same boat. Testaverde, Keyshawn Johnson, Bill Parcells, all these kids, we're all at risk. They're all waiting to say, you guys are washed up. They're all waiting to say it. That's the business. And, but that's also the fun. That's the fun.